actually prepared for this one. I researched the plot, the authors, read some of them, you know? I'm much more prepared than usual. I'm not saying that this will not be a mumble jumble mess, but maybe a little bit less of a mumble jumble mess. If my phone is gonna be in the shot anyway, I thought I might as well make it a festive. Is that everything? Am I forgetting anything? Me? I had this image in my mind of stacking it up like a little pyramid all cute, but um, that's not gonna work, so uh, okay. I haven't thought about what order I want to do this in, but um, we'll just- Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I have all of the author's pronouns. River Solomon is non-binary, uses Fayfair, and within the story, there's a whole deck of people who use they, them pronouns. The book itself is about Aster who's on a space shuttle going to some promised land because Earth is destroyed. Earth is kind of messed up. But uh, so is the space shuttle. It's organized like the antebellum south in the US, so the lower decks are the darker skinned people and they have energy rations, sometimes the heat doesn't come on, actually a lot of the times the heat doesn't come on, and in the upper decks they have like huge swimming pools and sports things and golf courses and all of the like white people, entitled white people live there. So Aster lives on the lower decks, however she's a super smart human and she's a trusted doctor and she befriends like the holy surgeon and so she's able to access a little bit more but throughout the book she's trying to decode some journals that her mother left who committed suicide and try to figure out how to fight against it i first started this a year ago <laughs> and i thought it was super interesting one of the first scenes is aster making a furnace out of like alcohol and rags and i thought it was so cool i was like wow look at all this science me studying material science all of the sciencey parts were so cool like river solomon knows what fair talking about it was so cool, but it was also a little bit dense, which is why uh, I kind of stopped reading it after a few chapters. But then I found the audiobook and I just listened through it and it was amazing. It was beautiful. Like the sci-fi aspects and all of the like decoding things is so cool. Highly recommend the audiobook. A book that I haven't read, but a lot of people read this for Asian Readathon. I know with Cindy had it on her list, and Jayla from Lala Loves It just talked about it. My lesbian experience with loneliness. I couldn't find this at the library, so I had to ask the front desk, I realized that I kind of don't really know how to count or do the alphabet. Like, I couldn't find so many books because I was inept. This 28-year-old woman is a virgin and is trying to figure out her sexuality. And it's a true story translated from Japanese. And Jayla said that it's a lot more intense. It's not like a funny comic book, but I'm looking forward to it. I like it. I just read Grass, which is also intense and not very funny. I'm very excited to read this one. It seems very cool, very cute. The whole inside is just like pink and black. Very cute. Another book related to Asian Readathon, The Empress of Salt and Fortune. I read this for Asian Readathon, but I barely understood anything. So I'm thinking of reading it again. I have it on hold for audiobooks, so I want to listen to the audiobook and see how that is. But very, very beautiful book. The way Yasmin described it, who I read it with, is that there are these clerics who all use they them pronouns and there's like a housemaid some kind of character there called the rabbit these are all humans i i thought it was going to be like about animals i don't know that's just but <laughs> rabbit was very close friends with the empress and so she goes throughout the palace looking at different things and telling little snippets of her life with the empress to these clerics and there are also some more gay things each of the snippets were like so beautiful and so mystical and marvelous uh but i didn't understand how they all related together until yasmin told me and then it kind of made a little bit more sense somebody on goodreads said that this is a little puzzle box of a story and uh my brain wasn't big enough to figure out the puzzle box, but maybe if I look at it a few times, perhaps. A book that's not confusing at all, and very, very cute, <laughs> Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee, E-M pronouns, and this was just, this was just the cutest thing ever. I was squealing so much. I've always said that I don't really like romance stories, except all of the LGBTQIA plus romances that I've read, I haven't had a problem with. So then I was doing some analysis. Why don't I like these straight romances? Except for Love From A To Z, they're the best thing ever. And I came upon a possible explanation. In a lot of straight romances, it really emphasizes their like gender norms. Like the woman is petite and cute and shy and oh my goodness, you saw her fall asleep in the car, how embarrassing, ah! And the man is all like muscular and carries heavy boxes and is super tall and oh my goodness, um, look at his butt. And I really hate that! So, um, I don't know, that seems like a more valid reason to not like straight romances, as opposed to me just saying I'm here for the gays. 
But meet Cute Diary! Super, super cute. The main character is Noah. He's a trans boy, and it also talks a little bit about his Japanese Indo-Caribbean background through little stories and food that his brother makes, and it's very cute. And he has a blog called The Meet Cute Diary, where he posts stories of trans people finding love, and it's the most beautiful thing ever. However, they're all fake. They're all from his imagination. And he originally started it to kind of write out his dreams, but then a bunch of people started following it, and gave hope to trans kids all around the world, and so he has a real duty. However, a troll comes and exposes that it's all fake in order to save his reputation, his story, the thing that he's selling, because, you know, if people don't believe this, then they're not gonna believe that trans people can find love. And so he fake dates this boy named... So he fake dates this white cis boy named Drew, and they do a lot of really, really cute things together, you know, for the diary, and... It was just very, very cute. I really, really liked the ending. The author also incorporates a lot of neo-pronouns into the book, which is very cool. Reading a book using all of these neo-pronouns, kind of getting your mind used to seeing these neo-pronouns, and then also being exposed to different various neo-pronouns and how people identify. And I thought the trans story was written very well, and there's one scene where the mom calls him Noah, and Noah just his heart just fills because of the way it sounded so natural from her mouth when she had been hesitating and taking more time to adjust and ugh, it just warm fuzzies when there's loving accepting people but yeah i really love this it was very very cute i did read this one am i making it clear which ones i read and not if it sounds like i know what the book is about it probably means i read it i mean look at the cover the cover is also adorable like it just looks like candy. Very, very cute. Thank you, Emery Lee. You made such a beautiful, adorable book. And now for something darker. Vicious by V- uh, no. Vengeful by V.E. Vengeful by V.E. Schwab, which is the sequel to Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which I read last year and super, super enjoyed. And then I saw Vicious on a lot of lists for asexual representation and... I don't know. I didn't really get that at all when I was reading it. Just because Victor Vale is so obsessed with revenge and his identity and thus doesn't have a love line doesn't mean he's necessarily asexual but apparently in this book it kind of establishes that more and talks about his lack of sexual attraction which i kind of looked up thoughts on the internet and a lot of people are like oh my goodness amazing like we want a book that's not just about their sexual orientation like you know victor vale being asexual is not a main part of the book he's also doing other things which is amazing and other people are saying yeah but those other things are murder so you know when asexual people are already kind of seen strangely for not having these human feelings uh and then on top of that now being a psychopath and murdering people mm, yeah i see how that wouldn't be so great the solution to anything is just more representation you know have some asexual characters that are doing evil things and then have some beautiful asexuals you know? You know? But anyway, also, the antagonist of the book is allosexual and also is a psychopath and kills people, so, um... It's not just asexuals who are filled with a murderous rage. Anyway, <laughs> I'm looking forward to read this book because I loved Vicious Swab. Uh, th what? Speaking of slightly magic things, PET! I read this on audiobook. I read this and Unkindness of Ghosts on audiobook, but I also borrowed the physical copy from the library because if it's not here, I'm gonna forget to talk about it. So, Pet by Akweke Emedzi, and the narrator for this audiobook, so beautiful, oh my goodness, his voice was like butter, and he was doing amazing at all of the different voices, and it was just, it was just such a beautiful audiobook, and it's quite short, I think it's only like six hours, I didn't know much about it, I just knew that people really liked it, and so, uh, I listened to it on audiobook, but, wow, this was like, the most mind-blowing thing ever, this is one of my favorite books, like, Holy moly, holy moly! The Dear Reader part? You have to read this Dear Reader part. It's part of the book. It's... This just blew my mind. I... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And the cover? The cover is beautiful. Like, this color of purple like, goodness. And, and this gold is, like, shiny gold. Oh, this was just such... This was just such a cool book! Let me just read you a little bit of the Dear Reader part. Okay? Okay. Dear reader, they don't make evil like they used to. Politicians make policies putting children in cages and allow big companies to pour poison into our air and water. But they will say they are doing it to support business and that we'll all reap the benefit of the poison eventually. 
On television, in movies, villains are easily recognizable. The bad guys wear long dark robes and have no noses or wear tight-fitting suits and have red eyes. There is something comforting in this idea that when you see evil, you will know it. That it cannot be hiding in the everyday faces of people you ride the bus with or go to school with or share a sandwich with at lunch. It looks like such a happy, sweet, little, cute book, but it's not. It's dark, and it's intense, and it's beautiful. I forgot to talk about the representation in Pet. The author is non-binary, and the main character, Jam, is a trans girl. And there was a scene that was so adorable. Jam's first words were in response to people being like, Oh, what a cute little boy. Oh my goodness, what an adorable baby boy. And Jam said, Girl, girl, girl! And the dad just picks her up and soothes her and says, I'm sorry, we didn't know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. We didn't know. And then goes on to accommodate her. And oh, that was just so cute. Like, so perfect. Just like, oh, we didn't know. But now we know. And oh, it was just so cute. I also buddy read this with a friend on a road trip. He also listened to the audiobook and he was just sending me all of his thoughts and all of his deep analysis. Like, I loved the main theme of this, but there was so much symbolism that my friend pointed out, and I was like, oh my goodness, I did not notice. Super, super cool, made me love the book even more. If you ever read this, come talk to me. I'll tell you all of the symbolism that I, I couldn't think of on my own, so then maybe you can have your mind blown, or you can find out that Dana, what the heck, like, come on, come on. Like, her dad's name is Aloe, and he's just like such a soothing, beautiful character, oh my goodness. And then everyone else has nouns for their names, and so just looking at how their name fits in with their character is like, hmm, hmm. But yes, this was so amazing. And oh my gosh, Jim's friendship with her best friend, Redemption. Oh my gosh, Jim and him are just, oh, the sweetest friends ever. And oh, there were some beautiful wordings that just showed how much they love each other. Just the confident, beautiful love that they have and Jam talking about how Redemption looks so handsome in this outfit or super cool when he does this without it being like a romancy thing and just being super loving best friends was like oh, the most beautiful thing ever. Oh my goodness. Love this so much. So much. So much! And apparently Yasmin started reading it so very excited. Yasmin, I will bother you a lot about it. Okay, back to it. Hopefully I don't forget anything else. I loved the way everything was talked about and incorporated in this book. I don't... Please read it! Ooh, is that a rainbow? Never mind. I'm, I'm just seeing things at this point. Okay, one of the books that I'm currently reading, Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigenous queer speculative fiction, edited by Joshua Whitehead, a member of the OG Nehiyo, uh, Canadian's First Nations, and it's a collection of short stories all written by two-spirit and queer indigenous writers from all across Turtle Island, which I learned through this book is what this land we now call North America is often referred to in indigenous communities from a creation myth. Now I know what this land is called. Very cool. When I saw this, I was super, super interested. For a personal project of mine, I was looking at kind of how gender changed throughout history and found the term two-spirit, and I thought it was super cool. And so I'm super excited about this book. I love it so far. I've read three or four stories so far, and it's written by authors all across Turtle Island. And oh, this book is about kind of a utopia and how indigenous people are existing in this utopian world. And one of the comments say that it's a reimagining futures where indigenous love, liberation, and laughter flourish far beyond the settler imaginary. Beautiful. Beautiful! And I really love how it's going so far. It's super cool to see this utopian world that's not exactly what mainstream utopia is depicted as. And in the introduction by Joshua Whitehead, he talks about how he originally kind of wanted everyone to write a dystopia, but then chose to have everyone write utopias because today is the dystopia. Like, all of this nonsense that has changed how the land looks completely. Like, this lake is manufactured. That hill is also manufactured. They dug out the lake and put it in a pile. And all of these trees are like planted. There's there are little like stakes to help it grow, and probably not even <laughs> native trees. You know, mainstream like Hunger Games, Divergent shows that you can go into some room and turn on the nature setting, and there's trees, and you feel like you're in nature, but it's like a virtual reality thing. But like, ooh, you think you're getting nature, but it's actually not. Well, that's what that's what I'm doing right now. Like, this is a simulated nature. 
Ain't that weird? Doesn't it make everything like a little bit more eerie? Yeah, that just, it just changed how I looked at, at everything in my life. Yeah, yeah. Another book in efforts to unlearn a lot of what I learned throughout my whole life and learn new things. Queer Ancient Ways, a decolonial exploration. I bought this at the feminist bookstore in Chicago. Um, I'm very, very excited about this. Also, like, it feels really nice. <laughs> it talks about mythological figures in Babylonian and Nahua creation myths and how Western literature has often attributed certain things as feminine when the original texts themselves don't allude to that in any way and often actually discourage you from gendering them in a feminine way. And so I'm just really looking forward to seeing how this book breaks apart all of these things about gender and how we currently view gender and sexuality and all of these things. And I don't know, I think it's going to be super, super cool. And also I think it might be available online for free. Vive la open access. Does that mean that you can find it anywhere? online but yeah this kind of reminds me of a quote from the movie a uh, hundred foot journey where a french restaurant is talking about how they're more classical and the owner of the indian restaurant across the street is like what do you mean classical india is the oldest civilization in the world what do you mean classical and i was just like but yeah why why is the world like this now another book that i found through the feminist bookstore in Chicago but didn't end up buying Uncomfortable Labels, My Life as a Gay Autistic Trans Woman by Laura Kate Dale and isn't that hilarious? Like labels because gay trans women and then also one common trait of people on the spectrum is that they can be sensitive to labels or like seams or itchy things and so you know uncomfortable labels but <laughs> it's so funny it's so funny that's why I fell in love and I found the book at my library. Apart from the title, I don't really know what this is about, but you know, I'm looking forward to reading about her experience, her very intersectional, all of these experiences. Oh my goodness, okay. Whoa, la, 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 la. Moonstone by Xion, the boy who never was. It's translated from Icelandic and takes place in its capital, Reykjavik, when the Spanish flu is going around and has hit a lot of Europe and is now going into Iceland. And the main character is trying to figure out how to balance the queer identity and the terrors that are going on outside and to live in this imaginary world and how to deal with it. Very cool. And I'm trying to read more translated books. I used to think like, ah, oh, you know, like it's not the same as reading it in the native language. Like things are lost in translation, but I'm not gonna be able to learn all of the languages and also translators are amazing and they do a really good job a lot of the time so read translated books Dana now I am now I am Pero un libro que no necesita una traducción pero hay Resistencia Introduction by Julia Alvarez edited by Mark Eisner and Tina Escaja Poems of Protest and Revolution Isn't this beautiful like I keep looking at it in my room and it's just gorgeous. This also is a collection of works from poets all across Latin America, and it has the original Spanish version on the right and the English translation on the left. Voy a leerlas en español porque quiero practicar, pero um, necesito la traducción. Probably, probably. <laughs> pero son poemas, son cortas, así que tal vez puedo practicar, puedo entender. Ya veremos. I'm very excited for this mainly for my opportunity to practice Spanish. I tried going to Spain, but then COVID sent me back. I'm going to go to Latin America after I graduate. Like, si hablas español y quieres hablar conmigo, mándame un mensaje. I will make a lot of mistakes, pero, but yeah. The poets of Resistencia explore feminist, queer, indigenous, and ecological themes alongside historically prominent protests against imperialism, dictatorship, and economic inequality. Very, very excited to read all of these. And Rana just made a video about modern poetry. So, I don't know. I didn't want to get into poetry before, but now that Rana made a video about it, I have to, right? This can be one of them? Does it count? Honey and Issues, Guide to Fake Dating. I know very little about this book. Hannah from Hannah's Bookish Studies wanted to read it with me and Yasmin, and so I put it on hold, and I thought I wasn't going to get it until way later, but I have it. I'm, I'm going to have to hold off on reading it until later, until Hannah and Yasmin can get their hands on it. But I have it. I don't know what it's about. It's a fake dating trope. 
obviously. <laughs> yeah. It seems super cute. Like, look at these colors. Look at these beautiful colors. Look at, look at these cute characters. The drawing, the art. Very cute. Excited to read this. This train is very long. Bear with me. <laughs> IRL by Tommy Pico, who's from the Viejas Reservation of the Kumeyaay Nation. It's a sweaty summertime poem composed like a long text message. Um, it looks at how a modern queer indigenous person explores their identity after many generations of being alienated from culture, history, language, and trying to figure out his impulses and desires and history. And I think it's going to be super interesting and super cool to look at this perspective. Okay, last book. Cobalt Blue by Sachin Kundalkar. Translated from Marathi, it takes place in Western India where a family rents out one of their rooms and an artist moves in and he kind of lives this free life without family, without connections, without history, without a last name. And he's a super beautiful human. He listens to all of the mom and dad's long, long stories and always pays his rent on time and all of these good things. But then the brother and the sister of the family both kind of fall in love with him and one day he runs away with his sister uh, and causes some family distress and turmoil and confusion. Uh, I'm halfway through. The first half is from the brother's perspective, talking to this artist person, saying, you did this, and like, why, and I don't understand. It's just very sad and heartbreaking. And the second half is in the perspective of the sister. So it's super interesting so far. And I, I don't know. It's very easily readable. Also, I just really like this size of book. Like, more squat. <laughs> more squat and cute. And, I don't know, the, the inside also looks very cute. Like, the big margins. It, I don't know. I really like this size of book. Like, it's so nice to hold. I never thought about that before, but here we are. I don't know. Looking forward to finishing this book and kind of figuring out what happened with the sister, with the artist, with the brother. It's all a mystery. Whoa. So, um, this is a lot of books. <laughs> it's a week into June, and I've already read... Whoa. I feel like that's a pretty good ratio of read and not read. You know, that looks, that looks pretty good. Wow, look at me. I read all of these books in the first week. I mean, these two are half done. Well, maybe I didn't. <laughs> I'm so excited for all of these books. Like... It's also very hot out. It's 30 degrees Celsius and I've been sweating, but I'm so excited about these. So I'm, I'm dedicated to telling you about them. Uh, hopefully I kind of covered the representation that there is in each of these. Mm. Meet Cute Diary also has bisexual and asexual characters as well. At some point my camera died. So here we are. I'm very, very excited for these books. We'll see how many I actually finish in June, but my goal is all of them. You know, I have a lot of options. I mood read, but there's a lot of things for every single mood. So, but yeah, I'm very excited about all of these and like all of the different stories that each one has to tell and beautiful. Ah!